Coral reefs are the rainforest of the sea. Coral mass bleaching event. If you give the reef a chance. We don't know how much coral has died yet. We all know coral to be colorful and vibrant marine formations in some of the world's most beautiful locations. They are a kaleidoscope of vibrant hues and an architectural wonder. But why are these tourist hotspots studied so extensively? Some estimates say that about 25% of all marine species are found in, on, or around coral reefs. And those estimates range from 230,000 different species all the way up to 10 million. With that amount of biodiversity, coral reefs play a critical role in the ocean's ecosystems. They provide a habitat, create a marine food web, and great spawning grounds for the next generation. They also benefit us, probably more than we realize. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, coral reefs have a total economic value of $3.4 billion, protecting homes, helping the fishing industry, and driving tourism. They create stunning scenes for swimmers to tour the undersea world, but many divers submerged lathered in sunscreen, leaving behind some 6,000 tons of sunscreen washing through the U.S. reefs. And that's bad news for corals. Oxybenzone is an active ingredient in about 50% of the sunscreen sold in the U.S. It is designed to absorb the harmful UV portion of sunlight and convert it into harmless heat to protect our skin from the sun. But some scientists believe this chemical was responsible for coral bleaching and death. This led Hawaii and other locations to ban sunscreens containing oxybenzone. Um, so corals normally live in a symbiotic relationship with algae. So corals, they provide shelter to this algae, which lives inside of their cells. And then in return, the algae perform photosynthesis, providing food for the corals. Now, under conditions of stress, the corals are known to expel their symbiotic algae. And this is this phenomenon known as coral bleaching. And while scientists believed oxybenzone was harmful to corals, they didn't understand why. With NSF support, Dr. Vukovic and colleagues at Stanford University started working to understand sunscreen formulas. So this was surprising uh, that a sunscreen was actually behaving as essentially the opposite of a sunscreen inside the animals. So rather than protect the animals from the harmful UV light, it was somehow using this UV light to kill them. And we eventually found that oxybenzone was actually being converted inside the animals into a new substance. The study revealed that once oxybenzone was absorbed into the coral tissue and exposed to sunlight, the coral tries to expel the foreign substance by attaching a sugar molecule into it to replace an alcohol group, turning it deadly. Now, unfortunately, it turns out that this alcohol group was actually the key to oxybenzone's function as a sunscreen. It was what was necessary to convert this harmful UV energy into harmless heat. When you put on the sugar, the sugar actually does the opposite. The sugar holds on to this UV energy from sunlight and it uses it to generate these radicals. The reef ecosystem can almost be thought of as a symphony, each organism, a different section, all working together in harmony. A mysterious die-off of sea urchins in the Caribbean Sea during early 2022 had scientists stumped and put the coral in danger. Long-spined sea urchins serve as vital herbivores in a coral reef ecosystem by keeping algae in check. Algae, which would outcompete or kill the coral populations. An international team of researchers, including a group from Cornell University with NSF support, were able to identify a microscopic, single-cell microbe known to infect fish, but now for the first time infecting urchins. Among the organisms hidden in coral homes are tiny creatures called cryptofauna. And for the first time in a century, a new member of the Florida Keys Reef ecosystem was discovered. Named after beach-like musician Jimmy Buffett, the new species of nathid isopod is a parasitic crustacean that gained national attention after the name was announced. So I started looking into you know, what it is that these clinger fish are eating. It turns out they were primarily eat these things called nathid isopods. And these are, these are tick-like, um, you know, crustaceans that hop on the fish, they take a blood meal and then they hop off. And if you cut open you know, the gut of a cleaner goby or a cleaner wrasse, they're chock full of these things. It's like popcorn. That's what they eat. 
they're eating these things off of these fish. So they're basically feeding uh, you know, the little, little fish that eat them, or even the corals that eat them, um, are essentially feeding on fish blood. And so it's kind of like having a super predator, like maybe a, a really big fish or a shark eating another fish, but then that thing being eaten by something else, which is like mind boggling. But by naming his discovery Nathan Jimmy Buffetty, this tiny obscure species went from undescribed to news outlets around the world. And that's a beautiful example of how the arts and sciences can really, you know, uh, work together to really help, you know, share science and, and how cool science is. With coral being such an integral part of the marine ecosystem, also supporting fishing and tourism industries, scientists are looking for ways to intervene before problems become too big. Tracking the health and vitality of coral reefs is no simple task. One approach researchers use is by watching the bare sand areas around a coral reef, called a reef halo. NSF invested in a team of marine biologists as they developed a new tool using a novel AI algorithm that looks at sandy reef halos from space. By combining deep learning methods, they were able to train a system to automatically identify and measure the reef halos with great accuracy along thousands of miles of coastline from high-resolution satellite imagery. Coral reefs are central to a delicate ocean ecosystem. Coral bleaching events and die-offs can impact hundreds to even thousands of other species when that ecosystem gets thrown out of balance. Here's the bottom line. Coral reefs are hotspots for biodiversity that are habitats for countless marine species, providing food, shelter, and breeding grounds. For us here on land, they provide natural coastline protection and support millions of families and coastal communities that depend on fishing and tourism, showing that they're not just pretty to look at, but vital to our ecosystem.